for our weekly live piano lesson. We are still working through Cool Songs for Cool Kids Primer Level. And I've been excited hearing back from everyone who's been working on the various cool songs as we've been going through working on the theory and working on the cool songs it's always fun to stop and think about how you can take the theory that we are learning every week and how you can start to compose music of your own that is one thing I love teaching students how to do how to compose music how to start creating music of their own and so we're going to pick up where we left off from last week with our Cool Songs for Cool Kids primer level. And what I'd like to do is review in the book we had talked about, of course, the unicorn that got away. And I'm sure everyone has looked at and already mastered Blue Lagoon on page 10, H2 already set, Go on page 11. Now we have the unicorn that got away on page 12, and then we have keep on keeping on on page 13. So I'd like to start with the unicorn that got away, and we can work on that and review what we've worked on so far. Let me go to the overhead view. Okay, just testing some sounds on the, the keyboard here. Let me review and play the unicorn that got away. And I will play that down here on this. So let me play this. Now, if you remember, the left hand is playing the perfect fifth interval. We have C to G. And that's pretty much all we play throughout the entire left hand piece. And if we're holding it for two measures, usually we play it like in measure one. And then we have those ties that tie the first and second measures together. That means that you don't play the second measure, you just keep holding. And then in the third measure, measure three, you play it again. But once again, we have those ties that they tie the notes, the whole notes, from measure 4 to measure 3. So you don't play in measure 4, you're just holding down still. And if you notice, that's what we do. We play, and then we hold for two measures. And then we play, and then we hold for two measures. That is what we are doing throughout the entire piece as we play that. That's it. That is all we are playing. Now, on page 13, we have Keep On Keeping On. Let me play this for you to refresh your memories. And you can go back and you can watch the video lessons where I introduce you and teach you how to play the unicorn that got away and keep on keeping on. I believe those were just last week and the week before that. So go clear back to July 8th. Thursday, July 8th of 2021, and you can watch that video lesson to learn the unicorn that got away. Keep on keeping on is on page 13. Let me just play this for you.
We are going up and going down. We're in 3-4 time signature with keep on keeping on. Now, this is on page 13. The left hand is actually just moving up, playing C, D, E. And in last week's lesson, we went over this and talked about how to play it. Then we have F and A, because remember, the fifth interval is C to G. The sixth interval extends up to that A. So in measure two, we have F and A. And then we go back to the perfect fifth interval. And then we play F and A again. And then we play C, D, E, F and A, C and E. And then, right there, measure 9 with the left hand. We start on F, F, and then we go down, E, and then D, and then we go back up to the G. And then we play F and A, and then we play D and G. See how we have the D and we have the G. And then we play a C major triad where we have C, E, and G. Let me make sure this is right in front of my mouth. C, E, and G. And then we go down to the lowest C, right below that left hand. And down here, it wouldn't be the lowest C on the piano. It's just the C below right there. So let me play this again. So we're moving down. That is all we are doing right there. Now the right hand, we play C and E to start off with, and then we go up to the G, and then we play C and F. E, D, C and E, G, C, D, C and E, G, C and F, E, D, C, and G. And then we have C and A, G, F, C and G, F, E, C and E, sorry, C and F, E, D. Here we have three notes played together at the same time. We have B, D, and G. This is in measure 12 of Keep On Keeping On, on page 13. Then we play E, and then F, D, B, D, C. Let me play that in its entirety for you one more time. So that is keep on keeping on. I'd love to have you work on that. And then we also looked at rhythmically impaired, and we're just kind of reviewing everything since last week and the week before. I believe we had more cool songs that we were introducing. So I just want to recap. With rhythmically impaired on page 14, the left hand is primarily just playing C. And we talked about, if you remember, watching the video from last week, we had talked about either getting a drum pad and having drumsticks, or we talked about not having a drum pad and just using your hands on your knees. But we talked about having a steady rhythmic pulse and trying to do quarter notes with the left hand. And I'm just doing quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See how I'm doing that? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. With my right hand, we're going to do start off just doing a whole note. One, two, three, four. See my right hand, I'm holding it down. One, two, 
three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this is a good exercise to practice whether you are a drummer or not because music is all about rhythm. And we can switch. We can do a whole note with the left hand. One, two, three, four. And the right hand can do quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is very good for coordination. It also helps stimulates the neurons in your brain. So it's a very good exercise to practice and work on, but it's very helpful for piano. And then we can switch. See how we're switching right there? Switch. Switch. See, I'm doing quarter notes with my right hand. Now I'm doing quarter notes with my left hand. You can get faster. And then we can start to do half notes. Maybe while we're doing the quarter notes with one hand, we can do half notes. See how I'm doing two beats with my left hand? For every, I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we can switch. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm just switching. Essentially, we're playing quarter notes with one hand, and we're playing whole notes with the left hand, or the other hand, and then we're playing half notes. So essentially, we were doing quarter notes against whole notes, and then quarter notes against half notes. And that is all we are doing with rhythmically impaired with this piece. Let me play it for you as a review. If you notice, my left hand is doing steady quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we're staying on the C. I'm at measure six right now. Measure seven. Measure eight. Measure nine. And then we go up to F. Hear that? So we're staying on 10, 11, 12. And then we go back down to C. That is what we are doing as we are working on this. So it's kind of a, a pattern, if you think about it, because we have this pattern. But the pattern, what we are doing is we are playing and holding one hand down while the left hand is moving. See how we are doing that? One, two, three. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That is all we are doing. And then the right hand goes up an octave. That is all we are doing. That is rhythmically impaired. And it's it's a fun, fun thing to work on. It's a fun thing to play. But that is what we are doing with rhythm, rhythmically impaired. Let's go to page 15. We have not yet looked at Walkie Talkie War Cry. This is in 3-4 time signature. And if you notice, in 3-4 time signature, we're counting to 3 in each measure. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, Two, three, one, two, three. The right hand, 
Well, let me just play the right hand as it is. We start doing more quarter notes, and in this piece, we start introducing some eighth notes. So watch the right hand. One, two, three. 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 See, I'm counting that rhythm as I'm playing it. Pretend like this is a metronome or a drum beat to keep me counting and keep me playing. One, two, three. 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 One, two, and three. One, and two, three, and one, two, and three. One and two, three, one, two, three, one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. Now this is a fermata, so technically I could hold this fermata however long I want. Sometimes they say it looks like a bird's eye, you know, and think like you're staring the bird down, you know, who's going to blink first. But it just means hold it as long as you want. That's measure 14 right there. Measure 15, then we do 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3, 4. We cross over and put the second finger on that B and then play C. Now, the left hand is doing this. We're primarily holding, and it, if you notice, it's, it looks like a half note, but it has a dot after it. It is known as a dotted half note. So we are doing one, two, three, 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 one, two, well, I should have held that fermata as long as you want. And with a fermata, you can just hold it as long as you want. If you have someone who is leading the music, they will tell you when to come back in. But essentially, you just hold that and keep holding it. And then, right there, measure 15. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let me play both hands together. Let me count it while I'm playing this. One, two, three, 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 one, two, and three, one, and two, three, and one, two, and three, one, and two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three. You can hold that from on however long you want. One, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three. Let me play it again. That is Walkie Talkie War Cry. Now, below the title, with each of these cool songs, we explain what we are working on. It says skill, slurs, tide notes, fermata. So we have the slur, and remember that slur, it, if you look at starting in measure one and continuing all the way through measure six, there's a big long line. That is known as the slur line. It connects everything. It is to be smooth and connected. And then we have tied notes. Tied notes is when you have the same note. If you look at measure 7 into measure 8, we have a G, 
that is tied over. See that? And then also measure 8 to measure 9. Uh, actually, measure 9 to measure 10. We have the C that is tied over. It's the same note, and it looks like a slur symbol, but it means that the note is tied with the previous one. So you play it once, and then you just keep holding. Let me play Walkie Talkie War Cry again. I'm going to play this at a slower tempo or speed. One, two, three, 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 one, two, and three, one, and two, three, and one, two, and three, one, and two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three, and four, sorry, I'm going into four, four times signature, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and this is a fermata, so you just hold it out longer, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three. So it's fun, it's something simple that we can work on. One, two, and three, one, and two, three, and one, two, and three, one, and two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three. Hold the fermata however long you want. One and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three. That is Walkie Talkie War Cry. I'm going to turn the page now and we are going to look at the next piece. It's actually a cool piano exercise, is what it is. And so we are going to look at this cool piano exercise. We are actually focusing on intervals. And we've talked about first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth or octave interval. So if I just do the first five, this is known as a prime or unison first. This is known as a major second. This is known as a major third. This is known as a perfect fourth. This is known as a perfect fifth. I can play those as harmonic intervals Harmonic intervals means that we play them together at the same time. Melodic intervals means that I break them apart. Melodic. This is a melodic fifth, melodic fourth, melodic third, melodic second. See that? So this cool piano exercise number two on page 16 is to practice doing harmonic or blocked intervals and melodic or broken intervals. And right below the title, it explains what I just explained to you. It says skill, blocked and broken intervals. Example, C is the first, and then the second is C and D, the third is C and E, the fourth is C and F, and the fifth is C and G. Then it says refer to pages 42 through 45 in the appendix at the end of this book. Let me play this, and you can follow along. We're in 4-4 time signature, so we have four beats every single minute, every single measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now we're doing eighth notes combined with quarter notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then measure nine, we do eighth notes and we're breaking apart the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth. Watch. 
One and two and three and four and 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 two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three four one two three four. You can go back and take the repeat, or you can keep going on. Page seventeen. We start doing them. Same thing. The second interval, the third, the fourth, the fifth, but now they are blocked together. So watch measure eighteen. One and two and three and four and 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 two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three four one two three four. Now bottom of page seventeen. We practice doing an exercise. It's a clump exercise where we are doing clusters or clumping notes together. Here we have the second. Then we have two, three, four, all together, and then here we have a second again. Doesn't sound very pretty. It's to practice clumping the notes together. Below that, we actually do the triad. And then we do the notes in between the triad, and then we go back and forth. That may make you a little crazy doing that over and over again, but there's a repeat. You do it for three measures, and then you can repeat. And you can practice doing that over and over again. What I would even have you do, and you can start doing one hand at a time, but I would have you start here, and do those three measures, and then slide to the right and try it on D. Here's D minor, and then do the white keys in between. Only the white keys. We're in the key of C major. Slide to the right. Now do it on E. This is E minor, and then we'll do the notes in between. Slide to the right. Then we have F major. See that? Slide to the right. Then we have G major. Slide to the right. Then we have A minor. See, we're playing the A minor triad, and then we play these notes around it. Then we slide to the right. Then we have B diminished. See that? Then we slide to the right. Then we have C major again, and we can do this all the way up and down. It's great to get your fingers working independently of each other. And this is a good exercise. Do the chord in between, and I would start slowly like this before you try to go faster. See, we're trying to get the fingers to work together. See, and what we're doing is trying to play them. Trying to get them to move, we could start to do this, where we do the third, 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 and then slide to the right. And you can go all the way to the right, or you can come back to the left. Start at the top. Before we did the third, 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 you could start at the top and come down. See what we're doing, and we can do that with the left hand. Then slide to the right. Each time, see what we're doing is trying to get these triads, these three notes, these intervals, and we're trying to get the fingers to learn how to work together.
and then you can do both hands together see we're trying to get independence of the fingers trying to get the fingers moving up and the fingers moving down and, and going to the right and going to the left and and everything we are doing it, it's a process and that is what we are working on that is what I would like to have you work on up through page 17 in the book cool songs for cool kids primer level this week let's go back to this front view over here so we can be back here in the front work on that that is what I'd like to have you work on this week every week I I said I'm going to share something a motivational message either from one of my poetry books my poetry book the as if principle motivational poetry my poetry book right here this is just poetry that motivates is the name of this one but every week I'm going to share something from one of these books perceptions parables and pointers these are all motivational self-help books that I've come out with this is actually who are you your personal success goal book from a course that I'm going to be coming out with it's a success course designed for teens and adults to help them learn how to set goals and how to first off discover who they are and more important who they can become and then of course my book motivation in a minute where we have photos I've taken and we've have motivational messages and I've been reading from this book and I believe I read last time make it a goal to make goals I would like to read from this book on page 7 never ever give up this is what it says each day is a new day to overcome the mistakes of yesterday we can learn so much from our first second seventh or even seventh hundredth attempt at something and I think I may have read some of this before we can always learn something new and become our own success story there is hope in overcoming our perceived failures we are successful when we decide to do something we want to do and then follow through with our plans here are some ideas to think about. How can you create a personal roadmap for your future? What have you always dreamed of doing but have never done? What is one dream destination you'd like to visit this year? What new hobby or skill would you like to learn this year? How can you finish what you start and continually motivate yourself to keep going through the tough times? And then I'd like to read on the next page, You are the best, but always be better this is page nine this is what it says we must strive to be the absolute best we can be in our particular field talent or area of expertise this is a good goal to motivate us and help us improve and want to be better we must be our best and strive to be better than we were than who we were yesterday we should try to focus on competing against our personal best and striving to outdo what we have done before hopefully we will want we want everyone to succeed and do their best when we help others improve and do better we feel better about ourselves success should not be for a select few everyone deserves success and to be their best too often we think we are failures because we compare ourselves to others and what they have accomplished their successes can help us be more motivated to do our best but we must not let their strengths and abilities weaken our view of ourselves we must be inspired by others and try to inspire ourselves to be our best how can you be your best in your field or area of expertise how can you help others improve and be their best so that is the motivation in a minute for today during our lesson that I would like to have you think about what can you do to be your best today and strive to be better tomorrow each day that we can be better and continually strive to be better that is what our purpose is that is what our goal is what are you doing right now to learn to stretch yourself to grow to improve to progress and how are you measuring that progress so take a few minutes each and every day those of you who have already purchased my book who are you your personal success goal book this actually has a page for every single year where you can write down what your goals are 
one main goal you want to accomplish that day. And it's a progress report that you can essentially write down what your daily focus is, your daily virtue, your daily biography. You can write down three micro goals to be accomplished today. You can write down your daily to-do checklist of chores, homework, activities to be done, books that you are reading or that you would like to read this week or finish this week, and then what you have discovered about yourself each day. And with each day, there's, there's actually a goal of something to do, whether it says learn the rules of one sporting event or activity, go on a hike by yourself or with family and friends, and each day it's just something to challenge you. Work hard, play hard, and learn and grow in between. Learn how to dance. Learn at least two simple dance steps. Be positive. Watch an old black and white movie. I mean, there are every day there's something different, and you can have one of these for every year. So I would have you, if you don't have one of these, you can get one. You can just get it off Amazon. It's Who Are You? Your Personal Success Goal Book by Gerald Simon. This will also be within the new Who Are You? Your Personal Success Goal Book course that I'm creating for the youth and adults. This will be something we'll be working on and focusing on within that. So thank you guys for watching. You can go to, within the course and within the site, you can go and even select one of the cool songs you would like to start working on. I know we had been looking at Safari and we had been looking at Attack and some other ones that have the cool accompaniment minus tracks. You can keep working on those. Try to play along with the accompaniment minus tracks. See if you can even film yourself and then share that within the private Facebook group for these weekly piano lessons. But... Thank you guys. You guys are doing a wonderful job. It's great to hear from you. Keep up the good work and continually do your best and strive to be better in everything you do. But thank you guys for attending this weekly lesson. And these are... I, I love the feedback that we are receiving from so many around the world who are enro already enrolled in these weekly group online piano lessons. If you have family or friends who would like to be enrolled in these weekly group online piano lessons and attend these live piano lessons, either in person or they can watch the recordings every week that we do, have them check out my website, EssentialPianoLessons.com, and they can sign up for either the apprentice stage, which is what this is, or the maestro stage, or the virtuoso stage. And again, those who sign up for the virtuoso stage instantly have access to the apprentice and maestro stage as well. So, thank you guys for watching. Have a great week. Do your best. Strive to be better in all you do. Thanks for the great lesson. See you guys. Bye.